Lucinda, I was just going to ask you, uh, what are your thoughts about coming here to Ballyhay? Um, why are you here? Um, I'm here because I was invited uh, mm -hmm. by Dermot Flynn and he's somebody that I have a lot of admiration for. I think he's been very courageous, very vocal and um, I, um, you know, I think it's important that we engage in debate. Um, there are people who I think would coming from all sorts of different perspectives, but um, debate is healthy and we don't have enough of it in our democracy. So that's okay. it. Um, what are your thoughts about the EU? Do you think it's a friend or a foe? Or? Um, I think it's a friend. Um, you know, that's not to say it's perfect. I think there are a lot of shortcomings um, in the European project, but overall, being part of the European Union is necessary. It's essential for Ireland. It's by and large been good for Ireland, and um, I, I think that Ireland needs to be part of sh reshaping the European Union, making it more transparent, accountable, democratic. A lot of the things that need to happen at EU level also need to happen at home. Okay. What are your thoughts about Michael Noonan and the Promissory Note deal? Do you think it was a good thing? Do you think it was a bad thing? It's debatable, I suppose. Mm. Um, I mean, on the one hand, it reduces the ultimate cost of the debt um, for the Irish state and, um, over over a period of time. On the other hand, you can argue that it solidifies the debt. Mm. Um, so, you know, I, I see the positives and I see the, the negatives. Um, and, uh, and ultimately, I think that it's unlikely that we would have gotten a better deal. Do you think we could have burnt the bondholders? Um, no, I don't think that we could have bond burned the bondholders unilaterally. Okay, can I ask you why? Or? Because I think it would cause a huge credit crisis in Ireland. I think it would cause a huge inv investment crisis, and I think it would, huge, it would cause a huge confidence crisis. Okay. What do you think about how the government are handling the water charges? I think it's a disaster from start to finish. Um, I personally don't object to metering. Um, I think that conservation is a worthy aspiration, but this, I suppose, ultimately has been proven not to be about that at all. Um, I think um, people just are paying too much. Um, I know the squeeze middle is a cliche, but um, but it is the reality. Um, most of the people I know ca literally um, can't afford to pay any more. And um, I think that the mass demonstrations around the country are proof of that. Um, and that's on top of the fact that this is you know, yet another massive super quango. Um, it's employing approximately 2,000 more people than it should. There have been no you know, reforms or efficiencies um, found or created due to the creation of Irish waters, so it doesn't do any of the things that it was supposed to do. Okay. Why do you think the Irish government are behaving this way? I mean, do they seem to not be listening, or do you think they are? No, they're not. Um, why? Because I, I mean, they're they're disconnected, I suppose. Um, I, I think that there's a certain degree of Stockholm syndrome that kicks in as well when people go into government. Um, there is a sense. Um, that you have to defend the indefensible uh, just in order to survive. Um, there's a misplaced sense of loyalty um, and that comes to, from the party political system as well as from being in government. Um, so there are a lot of a lot of reasons for it. Um, I think the, the exit of the Troika last year clearly um, you know, left the government very exposed and you know, what might have been perceived as, as um, as sort of uh, good management or competent management of the economy, I think has been proven to really have been completely dependent on AJ Chopra and his colleagues uh, working with the government. Uh, very last question: uh, Would you have any thoughts on TTIP at all? Or um, yeah, I mean, I'm very excited about the prospect of TTIP. I think um, it has huge potential to help grow the European and the US economies. It's very early days, so I don't really expect that much is going to happen now until after the presidential election. Um, you know, there are a lot of issues that will require a huge amount of negotiation. Um, there are concerns about GMOs, obviously, from the farming sector. Um, there will be concerns in every sector, um, and that's what the, the negotiation is about. I think it's much too early to, to predict or to take a final view on TTIP, because we don't know what's in TTIP. Okay, some MEPs are saying it's a little bit secretive. Do you think it is or not? Or? Um, I mean... <laughs> I mean, MEPs will always say that. Okay. Um, I mean, I, 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 I consider the negotiating framework, if you like, to be a reasonable one. The European Commission leads in the negotiation. They have a mandate from the member states. Um, it's something that the European Parliament actually has quite, um, quite little role in, okay. um, other than being kept up to speed and informed on a regular basis. Um, I, I believe that's happening, um, but you know, I stand to be corrected. I'm not in the European Parliament. Um, but the, but the main, um, the main structure, if you like, or the main way of um, of reporting is is back to the member states, to the governments, and to their officials, not to the Parliament. Okay. Final message for Ballyhay. Would you have one? 
or people um, about you? I think just um, you know keep up the faith. Um, I think that there is a genuine uh, respect for the Ballyhay campaign um, amongst you know ordinary citizens. I think that you know they've been so persistent and consistent in um, their pr the pursuit of their objectives, and um, I think that's really admirable. And um, you know I wish them continued luck and success. Thanks very much. Marcus Howard, test one, two, three.